Ilyana Rasputin first appears in Giant Sized X Men number one. She does not speak, and she is not named. She's identified only as Colossus's sister. And here we have a great representation of how creators' rights in comics can fail pretty spectacularly. Despite giving Ilyana neither a name nor a voice, Len Wein, alongside penciler Dave Cockrell, will forever be credited as her creator, not Claremont, who would go on to give her both those things, as well as a great many other attributes in bringing the character to life. The attribute that we're most interested in today, however, is the symbolism that Claremont cultivates through Ilyana's tragic backstory and her subsequent rise to prominence as a superhero. Simply put, Ilyana is a survivor and functions as a symbol of childhood sexual trauma, particularly the struggle to live with that kind of experience. The mapping of the allegory is subtle, but consistent. Ilyana is a young child abducted to a hell dimension and forced into the servitude of an aggressive, possessive, and abusive male patriarch. The sexual violence is not explicit, but it is heavily implied, seen prominently through the violent sexual undertones of Limbo, such as its version of Nightcrawler, and through the symbolism of lost souls and total possession through which the dimension operates. We should also note that though the sexual trauma was exclusively subtextual in the comic books, it was made textual for the recent New Mutants film, a strong choice in a movie that didn't always make strong choices. When Ilyana returns to the X-Men, from their perspective, she has lost her childhood, and they all have to adjust to this new teen version of Ilyana whilst suffering through their own guilt at failing to protect her. This is nothing, however, compared to her suffering. Ilyana carries Limbo with her in the form of her dark child persona and soul sword. She finds herself striving to acclimate to a world that is incapable of reckoning with the experiences she has been through, and in some ways, with who she is now, as a person. She hides her demonic powers out of fear and shame for how she would be perceived and for the effect they have on her ability to integrate. All told, it's a horrifying burden to place on a teenager, even within a series that famously uses placing horrifying burdens on teenagers as a major characterization strategy. Even simple acts, such as listening to her best friend complain about problems that pale to a shocking degree in contrast to Ilyana's, speak to this burden. In the aftermath of her limbo transformation, Liana is portrayed as not having any significant romantic relationships. Historically, this has been read in two ways. The first sees Liana as a rare asexual female character in comics. This reading can be connected to sexual trauma, as past sexual trauma has an increased prevalence in asexual adults, though in reality this might be more of a correlation than a causation. The numbers vary pretty wildly, and many of the studies depend on self-reporting, a flawed methodology. The other and more common reading sees Ilyana as having a subtextual romance with Kitty Pride, which makes sense in a number of ways, and can be easily read into a number of suggestive scenes, or could simply be the result of audiences misinterpreting a rare portrayal of a strong female friendship in comics based around mutual support and trust. Or of course it could be both, depending on the subjective experience of individual readers, scenes, or characterizations. Kitty might be the first confidant to Ilyana's tragedy, but she's not the only one. Ilyana also struggles to hide her demonic nature from her New Mutants teammates. She is persistently distrusted and particularly shamed and antagonized by the most religious member of the team, Rain Sinclair, aka Wolf Spain. Extrapolating on this relationship a bit, Rain's open condemnation of Ilyana's demonic side can perhaps speak to the failings of key social institutions when it comes to victims of sexual abuse, institutions such as religion. This comes to something of a head in New Mutants number 71, authored by Louise Simonson, where the New Mutants are watching scenes from Ilyana's childhood, and as a demon drags off child Ilyana toward what is textually abuse, and perhaps subtextually sexual abuse, the teen Ilyana casually walks away, bitterly stating, Come on, Rain, let's go. I don't think what's coming is something you ought to watch. Still on the subject of team dynamics, it is interesting to note that while Professor Xavier is ostensibly Ilyana's guardian for her early tenure at the X-Mansion, he was largely unable to reach her, and Magneto kind of did, as we see in New Mutants number 52, thus reflecting perhaps a barrier of understanding between those who have seen and understood the darker side of human nature and those who have not, an understanding that once again speaks to the gulf between Ilyana and polite society that she is trying to integrate into. Further complicating Ilyana's characterization is her relationship to her brother Peter, aka the X-Man Colossus. On multiple occasions, Ilyana demonstrates a specific reluctance to be seen in her demon form by Peter. This is apt since Peter is both a symbol of purity in X-Men comics, as well as a symbol of the familial expectations that Ilyana might feel she has failed to live up to by no longer being the young snowflake that Peter had known and loved. In this sense, Peter is a source of great shame for Ilyana but also great support as Peter persists in his unwavering faith in her. 
Peter's blind belief in Liana's goodness is condescending, but also quite sweet. As much as he fails to see her struggle, the persistence of his vision is actually what motivates her struggle against the darkness within. In this sense, Peter's ability to speak to Ilyana's sexual trauma by representing both the best and the worst kind of family impact on trauma victims is multidimensional and nuanced. Unfortunately, he is not always there for her, and it's his absence in her life, in the wake of Fall of the Mutants, that sets in motion the catastrophic sequence of events that lead to Inferno and Ilyana's ultimate self-sacrifice. Though co-plotted with Claremont, it's again Louise Simonson who executes the end of magic. In order to stop the inferno that she's accidentally enabled, Ilyana throws her soul sword at the sky and is transfigured back into the young girl who first passed through Belasco's portal. The choice of ending is difficult, as it could be read to suggest that an erasure of Ilyana's trauma is the only viable solution, but this reading would stand in sharp contrast to the tone of the story, which does not portray a happy ending. Ilyana's act of martyrdom is tragic, and that tragedy is deftly articulated both in the issue in which it occurs and within the issues that follow. Over the course of 70 issues of New Mutants comics, Ilyana had slowly but surely become the main character of the series, and her loss is poignantly felt. Ultimately, through Ilyana, Claremont and Simonson staged a complex and human portrayal of the all-too-common real-world experience of sexual trauma one in which all manner of encounters can be seen to take on a symbolic resonance that speaks to a taboo subject in important ways. These all take a back seat, however, to the simplest possible truth of the character. Ilyana is more than just a survivor of sexual abuse. She is a survivor of sexual abuse who is a superhero, one with a rare capacity to speak to and acknowledge her drama without erasing it, and without being wholly defined by it either. It's a delicate balance, a milestone representation, and a wonderfully compelling character. It's magic really. Thank you for watching. For more information about the Claremont Run project, you can follow us on Twitter at Claremont Run or visit us on the web at www.claremontrun.com.